All right, have and have not fans, uh, here we go, The Surgeon. We got a new episode. It's time to do to do this, and I think this is the first time in a couple of weeks that I am releasing my episode review right after an episode, uh, because today, you know, has been a day just full of sleep. But in any case, episode just finished up. I have my notes here in front of me. Let's get into it. One of the first things I noticed about this episode, and somebody let me know, tell me if I'm wrong, was I the only one that felt like there was new background music? You know, like when Landon was talking with Charles and um, when Veronica was listening, or excuse me, when she was watching her um, wedding video. I, I mean, those sounded like new tunes to me. And either way, I'm, I'm here for it. I liked it. But uh, to start off the episode, pretty much, you know, Landon and Charles just talking. Uh, Charles pretty much giving more backstory on himself, which I actually like. Just talking about how being called Chuck and then making the transformation into Charles, it actually makes a lot of sense talking about things like, you know, for somebody who was a senator, then a president candidate, presidential candidate, and now the president elect, his mother, his army buddies, you know, everybody from his previous life, you know, pretty much back when he was a hustler and came from nothing, all those people look at him differently now and for good reason. So I do like that aspect because it really drives home the point that if nothing else, Candace is just like a reminder of who Charles used to be. And it's like, look, if I could change, you can change it. The one thing that made me annoyed about this scene was how he talked about how Candace was spellbinding pretty much that weekend they had together. I think it goes back to just the fact, I mean, at first when I heard spellbinding, I'm like, here we go. Are we talking about how Candace is good? in the sack once again and how every damn man on this show is seemingly mesmerized with her like what the hell but it actually makes sense the more they were talking about it because once again i think charles is just really attached to candace based off the fact that you know what hey she is one of the last remnants of my previous life that i have to hold on to that's the only reason, if you ask me, yes, it's it's sweet that it's like he understands she's hurting and whatnot. But at the same time, at the core, Charles is just holding on to Candace because she's a reminder of who he used to be. Remember, he just said like his mom, his friends don't look at him the same way they used to. Like even when Landon recommended inviting some of them over to have some fun, it wouldn't work. So, yeah, I think that's really the core of the Charles and Candace attraction there. Um, then we move on to Veronica at the house watching the wedding video. I love this woman. We'll have a lot of kids and I'll give you whatever you want. Anything to make you happy. Yeah, that's a damn lie. <laughs> and I already talked about this in the um, video I did about, you know, um, Veronica pours hot grits on RK. But so no need to stick on this for too long. Um, just like I said in the video, Veronica feels disrespected. RK is like, you know, I'm tired, woman. I'm sleepy. I'm going to sleep. And then the fact that um, he recommends, you know, a psychiatrist and whatnot, a, pe a pediatrician. Don't you find it interesting that in this episode they were referencing things like that, like, you know, Veronica getting help, somebody to talk to. And throughout this episode, a majority of the commercials were about getting therapy and whatnot. Anybody else catch on to that? So, um, yeah, not much to talk about here. She goes to the kitchen to get some grits ready. When she took that bag out, I'm like, oh, hell no, it's, it's about to go down. And I was actually surprised that didn't happen as the cliffhanger. I was really thinking that was going to be the cliffhanger ending. Um, then we get Landon and Charles drunk. And, oh, wow, Landon did take off. Well, excuse me. Charles did allow Landon to take off his shoes, but it didn't stop there. You got the shirt. Then it's like, I can't even take off my own belt. I was like, oh, wow, I know where this is going. And, then you know, Landon decided to take it down, and it didn't work. You know what's kind of funny? Charles did say he would gladly accept anything to get his mind off Candace, but, you know, when Landon was about to give him that anything, that's when, you know, he sobered up quicker than why I could say where the dope at, so that was pretty fun. Now, <laughs> man, okay, okay, so then we get back to the bar. Candace is just being a bitch. It's like, Rocky, if anything, Rocky should be the one that's mad at you, and then pretty much he lets it on that, okay, uh, he knows that Candace was the one that pushed Oscar out of the window. And, you know, Candace just got on my nerves in this scene. But then she made up for it. And then the next scene, when Landon came running down there asking for shots, 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 shots. Everybody! But, um, okay, this 
let me just say this much, kind of a pause here. This wasn't as good an episode as last week. This wasn't a terrible episode. I just feel like it was definitely set up for a lot of things coming, so I'm not mad at that. But some of these characters were acting a bit annoying to me. Like Candace just being, you know, a bitch as always. Landon acting like a four-year-old. Well, you said he was gay, so I, I tried to go down on him. So, yeah, it didn't work. And what did he say? Hang on, let me look at my scratches. I mean, I can't write to save my life. Uh, what was it? He talked to Rocky saying, you know, build these to my room. Oh, and mine too, please. No, because I hate you, bitch. I was done. I was done. That was, I felt like, uh, what's his face, um, on Friday, it's like, my grandmama gave me that chain. He gonna cry in the car. That was it. I was done. <laughs> that was too fucking hilarious. All right. Uh, let's see here. Didn't he say somebody named Kevin? Uh, those two hung out, got drunk, pretty much couldn't even take his clothes off, but then he decided to help him. They needed to want it to go down on him, but it didn't work. So I don't know if he used Kevin as a code name to cover up Charles or if he if he was referencing somebody else from his past. I don't know. But in any case, it was a hilarious scene. Then we get to Sarah and Wyatt. Let me just say this much. If I park my car and I hear somebody banging on the inside of the trunk saying, let me out. My first instinct isn't to open the trunk. I want to at least try to identify who that person is. Because she was quick to put her key in and, you know, open the trunk and then Wyatt hopped out. My thing is this. You don't know if that was a killer. I mean, mind you, she did speak with Wyatt for a bit. So I don't know if she instantly recognized her his voice. But I'm just saying that kind of threw me off. Like, I, for her sake, I hope she knew who was in the trunk. And mind you, she didn't know who... She didn't even think or even know why a person would be back there. So, again, I urge you, if I were to park my car and I knew for a fact that there was not a person in the trunk when I got into my car, when I parked my car and then left, my first instinct isn't to open the trunk. I mean, yeah, it would be kind of weird if there are other people around. It's like, Whoa, what kind of person are you got a person in the trunk? And I'd be like, you know what? Screw you. I know I didn't have a person in that trunk when I left earlier today. So, yeah, freak that. But basically, you know, it was like, you got any money? And it's like, no, we can go talk to my boss and then you can come to my apartment. Uh, Sarah, you looking at this dude and he obviously has something wrong with him. So you want to invite him to your apartment. Okay, that makes perfect sense. <sighs> okay. Candace calls Mitch. They have a little bit of a talk. Uh, apparently, Vinny owns the bar. His uncle Vinny owns the bar. I did not know that. Uh, basically, you know, Mitch is asking the question. A lot of people who hadn't found out yet, how did you score the president-elect? She doesn't want to talk about it. But uh, basically, Candace says, I want to come down to the bar uh, because she's asking about, you know, how Benny's doing. And, um, you know, that's probably going to be picked up next week, as we saw in the preview. Uh, Vinny shows up. Looks like a cop was talking to him. Uh, pretty much trying to get information on who put him in the hospital. And, you know, there's no security cameras. And as Mitch, uh, as Vinny told Mitch, you know, we don't talk to cops. Pretty much asking, you know, what's up with him and Vinny? For instance, high school, he doesn't like it. And here comes, again, not really going to stay on the scene a lot because if you watch my video about um, Jim had Vinny stabbed, I went into a lot of thoughts on this scene. And the only thing I need to switch up was I was wondering... What is Mitch going to think when he finds out Benny has over $8 million in a bank account? And you just switch it around. You just put Vinny where I put Mitch in that Vinny, uh, video. And I just talked about, yeah, I mean, if I were Mitch, I'll be upset. But no, it's actually Vinny for good reason. Because, you know, this dude has all this money, yet he doesn't even pay me the interest. What the hell's going on here? And um, he goes to check on Vinny. And it was kind of funny because Vinny's been gone for a while, yet he pretty much explains that the person that stabbed Benny was not only somebody hired by the criers, but it was somebody called the surgeon, somebody who knows exactly where to, you know, stab a person. And then from there, just send a message. So basically, if Benny doesn't pay up, this dude's going to come back for another, you know, doctor's appointment. And I think Benny wants to cancel that transaction. So, yeah, that, that was a pretty good scene. And, you know, just another pause here. I feel like, you know, I feel like this episode was definitely, aside from setup, like an exposition drop, like a lot of characters dropping information. That's why it felt a bit eh. Like it wasn't a bad episode. It wasn't great. It was good. That's probably why. 
Uh, Madison comes to David's house. Once again, everything I've already said in episode previews and whatnot, he wants to feel this pain. Uh, referring to Jeffrey in regards to, um, I don't mean to talk bad about your mother, that bitch. You, I, see, I've been saying that as a joke, but he finally said it, that bitch. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Like, again, I don't want to make this review sound like I'm being lazy, but for lack of a better phrase, I've talked about all this stuff in previous videos and it actually happened in the episode. Madison's like, you know, if you all don't stop talking about, about this, I got to leave. I can't hear this. And that's a smart move. Um, that's pretty much it. Okay, then David calls Jim, and here's another good part. He brings up Puzzle Pieces, which was actually the name of an episode back in Season 4, where Veronica did say that, hey, I have lawyers with all this incriminate, incriminating evidence on the criers and David, so if anything happens to me, they are ordered to take this information and then put together this picture that could destroy them all. I'm so glad they brought that up. That's great stuff. And now it seems like a quest for the Dragon Balls because now Jim and David had to figure out where to get these lawyers in order to stop this puzzle from coming together. That way David can take care of um, Veronica. But the main thing, aside from the puzzle pieces, is the fact that when Jim said, well, David's like, I'm done. And then Jim was like, oh, okay, I know what you mean. The way that Jim instantly knew what David meant when he's like, I'm done, that makes me believe that David has had people killed off before. And wow, so David is not as uh, clean cut as, you know, he that have us believe for the previous five seasons. So, yeah, th man, this season is something else. And in, in the preview for next week, it looks like, you know, he's going to have something done about Justin. But, you know, that's that's his own video. Uh, let's see here. Leo and Mac are fired thanks to Jim. And one of my favorite parts of this scene is the fact that Jim within a few seconds knew exactly how Wyatt was able to escape. Sarah was the distraction. Leo was, you know, in the house. Mac was doing his uh perimeter check. And then this fool left and snuck in the car. This was so good, but sad at the same time that Wyatt has pulled this shit so many times that his parents know exactly what to do. Well, what he did. And then from there, you know, um, Women should not be pushing this episode. We saw this with RK and uh, Veronica, Rocky with Candace, and now we're seeing it with Jim and Catherine. You know, call tell tell me to shut up one time, one more time. Shut up. It's like bitch. I'm like he's lucky the alcohol just flew in his face instead of that glass. That's all I'm saying there. Um. Then Catherine calls Broderick and pretty much threatens him because. I mean, he's in a lose-lose situation. Either lose his life in balls or, you know, gets deported thanks to Catherine. Either way, he's screwed because she wants to get laid because she's pissed off. The fact that she invited him over to the house, I'm like, that is a death. You should have just taken the hotel option, dude. That's all you should have done. And then he gets invited to, well, she pretty much invites herself over to his house and I do have a video about that coming out, so be on the lookout. I actually recorded like a bunch of videos earlier today, but guys, I passed out from like 2 o'clock to 7.30. I'm like, oh, crap. So that's why I whipped together three videos before the episode aired. So yeah, Broderick, mm -mm -mm. he's something else. Then we jump to the scene I thought was going to be the cliffhanger. A cute scene. Derek cuddling with Hannah a bit too much and I actually was going to do a video about will he try something in bed with Hannah but the lion tattoo video I did almost has 30,000 hits so I'll, I'll consider that a win and I it was a cute scene it's like you ain't nothing but a tease you I was in there in the bathroom I was looking for a towel <laughs> and, I, and I saw like you know your granny nightwear and gowns and whatnot then you wear this thing to bed and how am I not supposed to you know be turned not be turned on by it that was a nice scene. It didn't go too far. It was playful. It was like, you know, let me take off my shirt. And I'm like, he's going to do it. Oh, no, he's not. Then it all went to hell because Benny dragged his four-year-old ass in the room. This, see what I mean? Landon acting like a three or four-year-old. Well, you said he was gay and I thought he was gay. Now Benny dragging his behind. Okay, c can somebody give me the surgeon's phone number? I want to call him personally to finish the job. Benny is getting on my last damn nerve. So, you know, Derek and Hannah, you know, walk to the door, then he leaves. Oh, God. Okay. Um, so we round up the last few minutes of the episode. Madison's talking with uh, Jeffrey. Jeffrey has the guest room set up. Madison is like, wow, I thought I was going to stay in your room. Just another funny scene there. Um, 
pretty much, you know, some more backstory in terms of, you know, Madison not ready to share how many lovers he's had in the past. And then, you know, kind of playfully mocking Jeffrey. Oh, you're a virgin. You only had two. You had Landon first and you had Justin. Then while trying to dig into the what's up with the whole Justin Jeffrey thing, we have a freaking red pimple on Jeffrey's forehead. So is this damn fool, Justin, does he have a damn sniper rifle or something like that? And that's how the episode ends. Not even 15 minutes and I'm done. This isn't a bad episode. It's just the fact that one, I don't feel like making a 50 minute video like usual. Number two, I've covered most of the stuff in this episode in my prediction video. So this is a clear indication that if you haven't done so already, subscribe to the channel. But it was a good setup. Like I said earlier, this video, I mean, this episode was more about dumping exposition. A lot of talking set up for ex extra things. So the surgeon, pretty good. You, we got Vinny's return. Um, We, we got the hot grits. <laughs> uh, we didn't get the lion tattoo. Uh, that pissed me off. So I'm going to give this episode 8 out of 10. It is rewatchable. 8 out of 10. I mean, the fact that we finally got some, not just backstory on various characters, we got a glimpse into the past with David and Veronica's uh, wedding video. So, guys, yeah. I mean, I, and oh, on top of that, my Xfinity did not freeze at all. I was able to watch the entire episode. It did feel like we had more commercials than usual, though. Eight out of ten. I feel like that's a solid and fair score. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. As always, subscribe to the channel. I'm not just saying that because I want 100,000 subscribers, but all the videos I've done between last Tuesday and this Tuesday is proof that, you know what, most of these theories of mine come to pass. So with that being said, I'll talk to you all soon. Uh, I might be able to do a live stream later tonight if I'm up for it, and I'll talk to you then. Congratulations on making it to the end of this video. If you like what you saw, be sure to hit that thumbs up button as well as leaving your thoughts in the comment section below so we can keep the conversation going. On the left hand side of the screen, you should see a picture of Jeffrey Harrington. You can click on him in order to subscribe, but also hit the bell notification icon. That way you don't miss out on any new content. Also, you should see some videos appearing on the screen as well that I'm pretty sure you'll enjoy if you enjoyed the one you just saw. But also, be sure to follow me on social media such as Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Links to all my social media will be in the description below. And in order to help this channel hit 100,000 subscribers, I'm going to need your help. So make sure to share this video as well as the channel around with all of your friends on your own social media. But once again, thanks so much for tuning in, and I'll catch you all in the next video.